Welcome to the ServiceNow AI Control Tower Overview. ServiceNow provides an entire AI inventory to manage and monitor AI systems, models, datasets, and more. AI components from any application and platform, including, but not limited to ServiceNow, can be maintained in this AI inventory. The AI Control Tower supports AI owners, such as a Chief AI Officer or an AI Center of Excellence, to define the strategy and manage deployment. It also brings in the risk and compliance teams and other governance teams like data governance, security, and privacy, so they can provide needed guidance to the AI product owners and the AI COE to build capabilities with the appropriate guardrails in place. Here's how a typical AI inventory process could look from a lifecycle point of view. Upon the initial intake, there's an assessment by the governance team before they begin the building phase. Then, before the AI system goes live, the pre-deployment review will be conducted to confirm that the build meets stakeholder requirements, such as being compliant, ethical, effective, and efficient. Ongoing assessment of value and adoption can then be conducted once the new system is live. Let's see what this workflow looks like in the product. We'll log a request from the perspective of an AI product owner who is proposing an AI use case, review that request from the perspective of the AI COE team, look at the risk assessment from the view of the risk and compliance team, and then round it out with a look at other delivered reporting and analytics. Employees can come to the employee center to raise any kind of AI request, such as requesting a new AI use case. In this case, let's take a typical example of an AI use case request from the perspective of our product owner. Various details are provided by the product owner, including the models and data sets that would be used for the purpose of building out this use case. Once the request has been submitted by the product owner, it's sent to the AI steward or the AI center of excellence for its first review. The AI steward will then receive a notification to review the request and facilitate the next steps. The necessary input can then be collected from other stakeholders, such as the architecture team, the risk and compliance team, the legal team, the security team, etc to provide guidance and build out the system needed for the use case in a compliant, ethical, and effective manner. For example, here's an impact assessment sent to the product owner. This assessment captures various aspects from a fundamental rights point of view, including privacy, non-discrimination, transparency aspects, and many other sections. Based on these responses, the right set of risks and controls are identified and added to the AI system record. The AI steward can see these in the AI system record here on the Risk and Compliance tab. Here's a typical view of the risks associated with the system in the way a steward or a product owner may see them. But let's switch to the view the risk and compliance team might see. The AI risk and compliance workspace is provided specifically for risk and compliance teams and also provides access to the AI inventory where they see the risk assessment score based on the various factors scored through the assessments, such as reputational factors, financial factors, or other aspects from a regulatory risk classification point of view. This view also contains various compliance analytics, such as frameworks, regulations, or your own policies, to see how the compliance posture is derived. There's also a drillable risk heat map on the related risks and how they're plotted based on the risk assessments that are done, along with your issues and policy exceptions related to a given AI system. Let's talk about other reporting besides what we just saw in the AI lifecycle flow. Back on the AI Control Tower homepage, we get to see an overall status across the whole AI inventory, including strategy and risk and compliance and various other governance aspects. The dashboard highlights for the COE what things need immediate attention, along with the AI systems lifecycle, the most used AI models, the AI system types, their risk classifications, the most common providers, an adoption trend line, the compliance posture, and case management aspects. Also, there's an entire AI case management landing page for AI stewards and the AI COE, as well as showing inquiries that come from various requests such as AI training requests, policy requests, etc., that can be viewed by the AI COE and stewards to manage the AI case management aspects. Similarly, there's an entire view for the risk and compliance team in the AI risk and compliance workspace where they get to see the risk and compliance postures for AI systems, models, and data sets, along with the compliance posture across various regulations and policies defined within the organization. In addition, they can also see the risk posture on the heat map workbench across the AI inventory to see how risk is plotted in the various heat map areas to understand which of these are high risk and which are low risk from an inherent residual and target risk point of view. 
In addition to the AI control tower and AI risk and compliance dashboards, we're also stripping some additional metrics in an innovation lab release that measure value and engagement. From the value point of view, there are various analytics covering productivity analytics, such as tasks completed and time saved, as well as trend data, along with other value and productivity metrics. Similarly, on the adoption tab, you can see related reports that measure usage and performance through various adoption analytics. Thanks for taking a quick look at the new AI control tower.